about what is the Manchester Beer Festival hoping to achieve. It's a replacement for Camden's National Winter Ales Festival, uh, which was in, based in Manchester for quite a few years, but it's always a movable feast. So we rethought the festival. We've got a great new venue. We're at the National Cycling Centre, the iconic Velodrome uh, at Eastlands. Uh, it's going to be bigger than before. We're going to have 300 cast beers, which we think is the highest number of cast beers ever presented in one venue in Manchester, ever. Uh, we're going to have Cider and Perry. We're going to have foreign beer. Uh, we're going to have real ale in a bottle. Uh, we're going to have a parliamentary reception. Uh, we're also uh, going to be hosting two competitions. We'll be hosting a, some regional, the Northwest Regional Rounds of the Champion Winter Beer Britain competition, which will go forward for the following year's uh, national competition. And we're also hosting what's going to be effectively a Champion Beer of the Northwest competition as well. Uh, so we hope to have a good selection of local brewers uh, from across the region. Uh, who will you know, be putting in for what could be, we hope, will be quite a prestigious award. Uh, and of course, I think the icing on the cake, uh, being hosting the festival at the Velodrome, is that uh, certainly we're expecting during the weekdays, so possibly Saturday, Team GB will be practicing on the track from between about 2 pm and 5 pm. So we have a, have a beer and watch sporting heroes uh, whiz past. Why is the brewing industry so important in Greater Manchester? Well, it's, it gives it a regional identity. It's the only part of the country where four old established family brewers have survived. And they put their mark both uh, on the region and on the region's pubs. A lot of parts of the country, the pubs are largely pub company dominated. Here we have four independent family brewers with sizable tied estates, which have, have invested in the pubs, kept the pubs going where, you know, perhaps some pub company pubs have closed down. Uh, they are individual pubs, they each have their own character. So we've got the family brewers, then of course we have we have about over 30 microbrewers now. Some are quite reasonable size concerns. Some are just tiny little brew pubs, one by old plants. But they all add to the individuality and distinctiveness of the region's pub scene, the pub region's beer scene. Of course, they employ lots of people, uh, which of course is a big plus for the, for the region, of course. Uh, and of course, some of them have put the uh, Greater Manchester on both the national map and I think with Robinsons, with Trooper, on the worldwide map for beer. So it's great for the economy, it's great for the region's pubs, and it's great for the international reputation of Greater Manchester. Brewing beer is important to Stockport, it's important to Greater Manchester for numerous reasons. Uh, reasons. The uh, most important, I guess, is really keeping people at work. Here at Robinsons, we employ just under 200 people. That's just one brewery. Uh, so there were lots of breweries in Greater Manchester, a micro or family. There were four family breweries in total, all employing similar numbers of people. Uh, and with the microbreweries as well, you're looking at about a thousand, just under a thousand people probably who are employed by the brewing industry. Um, the other good reason for or why uh, brewing beer in Manchester is so important is because Manchester breweries, as a general rule, brew good beer. And so not only is it good for Manchester, but it's good for the rest of the country and also the rest of the world because we send our beer down to London and to the Midlands and up to Scotland and also to places as far fetched as uh, New Zealand and America, uh, South Africa, Brazil. So um, it's you know it's important really for everywhere. Every Every human being on this planet is important that Manchester brewers brew good beer. How do you start? There are now thousands of great pubs in Greater Manchester. But uh, if I was going to pick perhaps uh, four or so, in the city centre, if you're a tourist, there's two pubs you really need to go and have a look at. Just for the beer and food and everything they sell. One is the Marble Arch. We can walk out of the city centre down Rochdale Road. Astonishing tile Victorian interior. Uh, great restaurant quality food and beers from the Marble Brewery just down the road, uh, which has won many awards. Uh, the other one is a very new pub, it's in the Northern Quarter, very finely fashionable Northern Quarter, Port Street Beer House, it's called on Port Street as you might imagine. Uh, that has got a also national reputation amongst beer enthusiasts for selling what are called craft beers from both the UK and around the world, a range from Europe, North America, New Zealand and the best of British beers. It's, Amazing place. Uh, further afield, uh, in Rochdale, the Bourne on Toad Lane in the uh, historic conservation area near the site of the co op, is current, National's current National Pub of the Year. Uh, that's a great title, it's a great award to come to Greater Manchester. Two old shops converted into a pub very expertly, half a dozen constantly changing guest beers, fantastic. And if I was going to pick one other, because obviously, uh, uh, I could go on all day, but obviously you don't want me to do that. Uh, I'd go here in Stockport to Robinson's pub, the Arden Arms, just off Billgate, just off the historic marketplace. Uh, great Victorian interior, unspoiled, it's on cameras, uh, 
uh, national inventory of uh, true heritage pubs. He's got a tiny little snub you can only walk access by walking through the middle of the bar. Great food there again, great range of Robinson's beers, so yeah, that, that's a must see as well I think. Uh, pubs to uh, definitely visit in the Greater Manchester area, uh, there are quite a few actually. Um, one that I'm going to promote uh, first and foremost is the Robinson's Pub, surprise surprise, but it's on Oldham Street and it's called the Castle Hotel. Uh, it's a fantastic pub, it doesn't really do any food, uh, but the beer that they have in there is absolutely uh, fantastic, it's second to none. They get through stomp loads of beer, so uh, the range they've got on there is fantastic. I think they've got 12 or 13 hand pulls on the bar, um, so they've got a fantastic range and they're not all Robinsons as well, so uh, which some people might like to hear. Um, so the castle is definitely a pub that um, I would visit. Uh, the uh, other pub that I would visit in Manchester is the Brits Protection. Uh, it's just a fantastic proper pub that uh, you can get great beer in and it's just how pubs almost should be. So three beers that are definitely a must try uh, certainly in the next uh, couple of months or so. Um, if you haven't tried Old Tom, you need to because it's a fantastic beer. Won World's Best Ale in 2009, so that was in entries with hundreds of other beers, and it came out top. Um, so it's an eight and a half percent, almost barley wine uh, style beer, and it's it's, it's quite unique, uh, really. There's no other beer on the market that really tastes quite like it. So uh, that's one to definitely try. Uh, the second beer that I would try, it's a good time of the year at the moment, although it is raining, I think today. Um, it's Dizzy Blonde. Uh, it's a really fantastic drink. Uh, without the risk of sounding like Julie Goulden, it's got lots of citrusy notes and grapefruit notes in there and, it, and it's a pleasure to drink and you can, you can drink quite a few pints of that quite happily. The third one uh, is Trooper. Um, it's brewed uh, by Robinsons but it had a lot of influence from Bruce Dickinson, the lead vocalist of Iron Maiden uh, and that's gone absolutely nuts. Uh, we can't almost brew enough of it so uh, that's definitely one to try. Again, where to start with so many breweries, we have hundreds of beers. Uh, Boddington's Bitter was the famous cream of Manchester. Well, that's, you'll be lucky if you can find that anymore. It's no longer a cast beer. The, um, the keg versions, which are rarely found on bars locally, are brewed many, many miles away. But a beer that took its inspiration from Boddington's when it was the cream of Manchester is Marble Brewery's Manchester Bitter. Like Boddington's, pale, hops all the way, and the taste, the aroma, the aftertaste, fantastic beer. Seek it out. The first thing to do on my list would be to come and visit Robinson's uh, Visitor Centre in Stockport. Uh, it's a great um, two, three hours worth uh, of activity. You get a brewery tour, uh, you get a tasting sample, uh, and also there's plenty to eat here as well and drink, of course. And there's also a really uh, good history wall uh, where you can learn about the history of our company. We started in 1838 uh, and uh, we're 175 years old this year, so it's definitely a must see. So uh, the other thing that I would do, and if any uh, City fans are out there, apologies because I'm a massive City fan, but uh, the Manchester United Museum is actually really interesting. It, whether you're a City fan or an Arsenal fan or whatever, it's still a really interesting, good place to go. Uh, it's got a few too many trophies in there for my liking, but um, it is really, really fascinating. The history of United is absolutely um, fantastic and you can't really take that away from them. Well, even if you don't drink, what you can do in Greater Manchester is take a tour of the city's heritage pubs. The Marble Arch, I've already mentioned, is one. Uh, we have the Britain's Protection, great 1930s interior, the Circus Tavern on Portland Street, tiniest pub in the city, dates from the 19th century, two tiny little partition rooms, tiny bar which only fit one person. The Heron House on Shoe Hill, great tiling and woodwork dating from a 1925 refit. On Cross Street, Mr. Thomas's Chop House, built around the turn of the century, fantastic terracotta building inside, green and cream tiling the length of the building. So you can go around those, have a soft drink, admire the architecture, and quite a few of them do some decent food as well. Campbell has uh, several key campaigns, but there's two where visitors to the city centre, or Greater Manchester in general, can really help out. One is to get people trying more different real ales, sides and perries. And with three local cider makers and 35 breweries, you really are spoilt for choice in Greater Manchester. So I'd say to visitors, if you do visit one of the local pubs, don't go for a familiar national name. Try a beer you've not heard of. If it's made by a local brewery, you almost certainly will not be disappointed. And on the back of that, one of our other key campaigns is to get people visiting pubs more often. Pubs are closing. There are a variety of reasons for that, but for some, one of the reasons is that not so many people go to pubs as much as they used to do. They're great social centres. They're you can eat out there, you can have restaurant quality food, you can enjoy the atmosphere, you can have great beer, you can have a great time. And you also, in Greater Manchester's books, you get a great welcome as well. So, so please, try our beers and visit our books.